on that over here on the left, this is Jim on the right, and uh, this is the, how to set up a two player head to head game for each mate. We have our um, deck here, which we've shuffled and cut the deck, and it gets placed in the middle spot on the board. Um, we've got our gold tokens ready to go, and we have our quest deck ready to go. The quest deck, we have randomly taken out three of the cards because you only use seven quest cards in a two player game. And then the first thing we do is, once we've shuffled it, we turn the top one over and place it into the card holder. And uh, they, these are not the gold tokens or the card holder that are going to be in the finished game. These are just prototypes, um, as is the rest of the stuff actually. So um, we also have over here the crew tokens, which um, you're yellow, right? I'm yeah, yellow, Jimmy's yes. yellow, so Jimmy's yellow and I'm white, so we put our um, quest tokens, which are the little, the helmets, onto number 35 on the score tracker on the outside of the board. Our crew tokens? Crew tokens. Crew yeah. tokens, right. That and signifies how much crew we have. How much crew we have. Yep. Okay. We start on 35, and we have a little bag of wheat token, which is the supply token, which goes on 45. We both start on 45. Our ships. Um, as you can see over there near Jimmy, uh, starting at Troy. So just over here, there's a marker for Troy with a picture of the Trojan horse, and that's where our ships start. So there's four phases. The first phase is card draw. So we both draw, we both, in a two-player game, we both draw two cards each. And just, just for the sake of um, the setup, we have removed the gift cards, which um, we'll put a little picture up now, just so you can see what the, which cards the gift cards are and the gift cards get taken out of a two-player game to uh, make the game a bit more interesting. Um, and, and for anyone wondering, this is just where we're rolling our dice. Yeah, this, this isn't part of it. This isn't important, it just yeah. looks cool. Who doesn't love to roll okay. onto Phil? <laughs> yeah. right? okay. so, um, so we're going to start with um, card draw, which we've done. The second phase is card play. So in this phase... And well, we rolled to go first, and oh, I, won the, I won the roll. Jimmy won the, Jimmy won the roll, so he's actually going to use this tin tin um, as the player one token for this game, uh, player one token will actually be a, a, a pop out um, token that you give with the game. Okay, so Jimmy will, both of us at the same time during the card play phase, we'll choose which cards we want to play this turn. I have selected secretly, yes, yeah. face down. So we place them face down. Um, okay, and any cards we're not going to play this turn, I you keep in your hand. So. I usually just place it to the side so I don't get it confused with what's been played this turn. Okay, then player one will normally say, is there any is there any blessings or curses? Are there any blessings or curses? No, I don't have one. Uh, I don't either. Okay, so then we just turn our normal cards over. And starting with player one, we go around the table and play the cards. All right, I have uh, Ares and Athena. Roll one, six-sided die, then choose target player. They lose that many crew, and you gain that many crew. Okay. So, um, I will choose you. Sure. <laughs> and I have rolled a four. Okay. So it's easy. So, so I go down. I go down to thirty-one, and you'll go up to. That's right. One, two, three, four. To thirty-nine. And now your card takes effect, and I put this in the discard pile. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's this one here. And my card is a ship effect card, which is which actually attaches to your ship. And each player can have one of these attached to their ship at any given time. If somebody else plays a ship effect card um, onto you, then it removes the one you've currently got. Also, if you play another one onto yourself, it removes the one you've currently got. So you can replace them, you can only have one at a time. So this one says, attach the target ship. You cannot be chosen as the target of any card. You can still be affected by cards that affect players without specifically targeting them. So basically now I, I have a card, I have a ship effect called Runes of Protection and I can't be targeted directly now. So um, a card like the one that Jimmy just played against me would no longer be able to affect me. So I, these ship effect cards I normally just place in front like this so I can remember that I've got a ship effect card active. Okay, so now we go to the movement phase. So we both, we both roll um, two D6 and um, and then um, player one will move first, and player two. I've rolled um, an eight. eight, and I've rolled four. Okay. So the so. the the so Jimmy will move his ship. Um, so the movement rules are: every space you move, you've got to remove one supply for that amount of uh, spaces. 
Okay, I'm going to use my maximum movement of four, so I'm just going to, uh, I'll pay one, two, three, four. I hope there's limes in that bag. I don't want to get scurvy. I'm going to go, <laughs> uh, and again, the goal of the game here is to, uh, is to reach our destinations here before we return home. We do want to take the voyage home eventually. So one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. And uh, I roll an eight, so I'm just going to work out where I'm going to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to end up just on the coastal area here. And I'm just going to move You can on. use these coastal tiles as long as they're touching. Yeah, as long as you can see a little bit of ocean, the ship can sail there. Perfect. And I've moved my um, supplies down eight. Okay. Awesome. So then we go to a phase called the cleanup phase, which at the moment is not going to do anything because there's nothing um, to really do. But normally in the cleanup phase or the end of turn phase, the, you would have a look at this reward card and give the rewards out if anyone completed a quest, but no one's completed a quest yet. So we just um, pass the player one token to the other player. And then we go to turn two. So this time I draw first. Two cards. Yep. I'll draw two as well. Just a little. All right. Now we get to choose. Hmm. So we're just having a look at our hands, and then the, when we go to the card play phase, we'll start to place them down in front. Which cards we're going to play? So I'm just going to play one this turn. You can play any number, correct? That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll just play one as well. Okay. Any uh, blessings or curses? No, sir. No. We just turn everything else over. You first. Okay. I go first. So I've got the same one that Jimmy had last turn, which is um, Aries and Athena, which basically says choose type of player. I choose Jimmy. They lose that many crew, and you gain that many. So I roll one d six. Sounds good. Oh, six. I've rolled a six. So um, here we lose six crew. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll gain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll put that in the discard pile. And overboard. All right, I've got Gust of Aeolus. Uh, choose target player, move their ship three spaces in the directions of your choosing. They, knew, they lose no supplies for this, though. So we've got a gust of wind coming, and I'm going to send you uh, one, two, three. I'm going to send you sort of errant to the south. Sure. Yep. And you can also obviously use that card on yourself if you were close to getting to a port. That's okay. Fine. That's fine. Uh, so that's your card play phase over. Now we're into movement again. So I've rolled eight. eight. And I've got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so I'm just going to have a, at this point, I'm just going to have a quick look at the quest reward card to see what the best rewards are this turn. And um, looks like the Sirens probably has the best reward because you gain a lot of crew. Um, although you gain a lot of supplies if you do Cersei. Um, gain a lot of supplies for Scylla and Charybdis. And there's also a Greek caravan at Scylla and Charybdis, so you can do some trading. Um, and the one that I wouldn't want to go to is the Underworld. So actually you probably would probably go for the Sirens. So I'm going to end up here. That's eight spaces and I'll just move my supplies down eight. One, two, three, four, eight, down to 29. And uh, what will signify this, the change in turn to a new card? Uh, when somebody has completed a quest. So as soon as a quest is completed, we'll... we'll the end, during the cleanup during phase. During the cleanup phase, yeah. okay. So that's, that's going to allow me to change where we want to go. Okay. Well, I've got seven. I'm going to go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't really have to make a choice yet because uh, I'm far enough Be away from away. everything. Uh, and this is going to cost me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll be on thirty-four. Now you're playing one again. You draw first. We'll draw two cards. And I'll draw two. So in a in a game with more players, the the how the cards are draw the number of cards you draw is a little bit different. And I'll put up a little graphic um, now just to show you that as well. So we, as we're going now, we're starting to place down the cards we want to play. So 
So I'm just playing one. And Jimmy's playing two. I'm going to play two. Okay. And I do indeed have a blessing. Okay, so you turn that over and just place it face down. Okay, wait. But I'll place yep. it face up to me. So okay. in the instance where someone actually has got a blessing or a curse, you just turn them over and reveal them. So what you see on the table now is how it should look. Yep. Um, if, if Jimmy had a curse or if I had a curse, that would also be revealed at this point in time. You would then start with the blessing and work your way around the table and play those cards. So you can go ahead and play that one. Okay, I've got Blessing of Zeus. Reveal all cards that players have chosen to play this turn and counter one card from each player. You may still counter a target blue slash red curse this turn also. This is a purple slash yellow blessing. Does that counter one of my own as well? Uh, no. No, it doesn't count your own, right? No. Okay. So I reveal mine. I reveal mine, so you just get to counter that. Which is? Uh, I was going to draw two cards and just go to counter. Okay. Let's count so it. Counter his. And now, with, with the blessings and curses, when they're, once they've been played, they don't actually go to the um, discard pile. They actually get removed from the game completely. So we'll just put it over. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just take it out of the game. Forever away. Yep. Uh, and then I get, I get to play my other card, which is target player rolls 46 for movement this turn. So I get to roll uh, double movement. Yeah, so you can target anyone. Sometimes it's actually uh, negative, for, uh, quite a bad thing for someone to target you with that. But at the start of the game, it's quite a good thing. So, all right, all right so, so you'll be rolling four of these six this time. Yes. So now we go into the movement phase. I've got seven. I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I've got seven, you've got twelve, so, so you go you're, first. you'll play one to get first. So in a, in, a, um, in a two player game, the rules about the, about the quest locations is that only one ship can go in there at a time. In a, in a normal game with, with three to six players, you can have two ships in a quest at any given time. So you can lock one of the quests out now to stop me from getting in there. So um, yeah, we talked about before some of the good ones this turn are Sirens and um, Scylla Intriptus and Circe. They're all good quests. Uh, they're all they're all quite reachable, especially by you. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm, I think I'm gonna go for Sirens just to make it easy. That one seems the most straightforward. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seven 8, 9, 10. Okay. It's okay. going to cost me 10 to get to Sirens. Yep. So I'll move down to 24 Supplies. supply. And then I get the benefit right away before you move? No, you get it during the cleanup phase. Sounds good. So I rolled a 7. Um, so I can't get the Sirens anymore because it's been locked out. So my second choice would have been the Scylla and Tribus, so I'm going to pay one, two, three. Move to there, it only cost me three. I'm on 26 supplies. And um, that's it. So now we go to the, um, the cleanup phase where we get our rewards. So we just have a look at, normally um, in this game there is a little pile of um, tokens at each place, uh, but we haven't got them printed out for this um, demo. Uh, normally, Jimmy would take a Sirens token at this point, but I'm, for the for the sake of this, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just writing it down on a bit of paper, uh, just off camera, just so I've got. And this is to mark which quest we've completed. Yeah, you need to, you need to complete all six to be able to um, to be able to venture get, home. Venture home, yeah. All right. Well, um, so, so I have completed Sirens, and you have uh, completed Scylla and Charybdis. Yep. So you get your Sirens reward first because you play one. So. You get 15 crew. All right, so I go from 33 to 48. That's quite good. And you get 1d6 supplies. Let's roll that six. You gotta roll hard six sometimes. Bam! Six. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and back to 30. And you get four gold. So here's where the gold comes into play. So now you don't, you don't start the game with any gold, but as soon as you start completing quests, you start getting those four gold. Um, in the deluxe version of the, of the game, uh, the gold tokens will be metal coins, which would be quite cool. All right, so uh, now I do my quest reward off the same card. So mine is lose eight crew. It's actually lose eight crew. Um, and then, but I gain three D6 supplies. So I'm gonna roll three D6 and gain that many supplies. Pretty good so roll. that's 12. Uh, puts me back up to 38. 
um, and I'm going to lose 10 gold, which is not significant because I don't have any. Uh, I've also got a Greek caravan, which is at the location where I'm at. So it says on the Greek caravan here, and all of them are different. There's also a Sumerian caravan. Sumerian caravan is currently at the Lotus Eaters down here, but, but we aren't there, so we can't use it. But I am at Scylla and Triptus, which is here. So I can use the Greek caravan and it says trade in one card to get two gold per card. So I'm going to trade. Um, and it doesn't go the other way, right? You can, you're selling cards only. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to trade in two cards and get four gold. All right, so put it in the discard pile. I'm going to take four gold. We're rich. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> yeah. So you're probably wondering at this stage what the gold's for. The gold is to stop people from targeting you with spells. So the spells are in this game are seen uh, seem to be the the powers of the gods. So if you make a financial offering to God, you can. Um, negate the the, the um, curse or the spell that they're about to cast on you. It has, it has to be a directly targeted spell. Um, personally, I can't be targeted by anything anyway because I've got the runes of protection. You can target yourself though, right? I can target myself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now we get rid of this large card and um, I'll just place it out, out of the way. And I'm going to put the second one up. And just to be clear, because this blessing I played earlier was a global counter, that, is that why it was able to... Yeah, it just affects... Price? It just affects... It. That one just affects... Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, the one that Jimmy was talking about was the, the uh, blessing that you played earlier. Okay, so now we've got one less quest card. So... It seems the Greek caravan has moved to the Siren. And the Sumerian caravan is at Circe, which is mm -hmm. on this island over here. Okay, so move the play one token over to the menu. Okay, you move this one. Yeah, sorry. And then I'm drawing two cards. You will you draw? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just reading the uh, effects this turn. Okay, I'm going to be a bit adventurous this turn and play my whole hand. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'll play three cards. Okay, so as player one, I then, once people looks like people have stopped playing cards, so as player one, I just say, um, is there any blessings or curses? And if there is, they have to turn them over, so I've got one. Do you have any blessings or curses? No, no. blessing or curses. All right, so as the only person with a blessing or a curse, I now play it myself, so... This one says, this is a blessing of Aeolus, who, is, who in Greek law is the god of wind. This one says, wind blows your ship 4d6 any direction you choose, lose no resources. So I roll, I action this immediately. I'll roll 4d6. I've rolled 14. Now, before I move, because I'm going to move myself into a port, so before I move, I'm going to just have a quick look at the quest card here to see which are the good locations to go to this turn. Um, so it looks like Lotus Eaters is probably the best because um, you gain a bit of crew from going there um, and you gain a bit of supplies. You, know, you lose a little bit of gold though. Um, most, of the, most of the rewards on here are pretty bad this turn. So I'm just going to um, use that 14 to take blow my ship um, using this blessing down to Lotus Eaters, which is make sure I can make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's only nine away, so I've now completed Lotus Eaters. This gets removed from the game. I've now completed Lotus Eaters, so I'm just going to write it down on my quest tally. Um, and this is where it becomes a bit interesting because I'll still get to move this turn, so there is the potential that I can complete two quests in one turn. Um, because I've used the card play phase to complete a quest. All right, so now we turn the rest of the cards over. And to be clear, once you land in the port, the rest of this is forfeited. This movement is forfeited. Yeah, that's gone. Yep. Okay. So we turn the rest over. Now I'm still playing one, so I'm, I'm still playing these cards first. So I'll play this one first, which is um, Polymechanos, which is draw two cards and discard a card. So I'll draw two cards into my hand. 
Uh, I've only got these two cards in my hand, so I'll get to keep one. Uh, um, I'm going to discard one. So the one that I'm discarding is actually, funnily enough, another um, Polymechanos. And I'm going to keep this one, which is remaining in my hand. And you'll play all your cards before I play any, right? Yeah, this one is my last one here. Okay. And this is um, choose uh, roll 1d6. So the first, first step is for me to just roll 1d6. I've rolled a 1. <laughs> That's pretty pretty ineffective. Choose target player, they lose that much gold and you gain that many. So I'm gonna choose a Jimmy. He's gonna give me one gold. I've now got five gold. Perfect. Yep. And okay. now you can play your three cards. Well I have a Plutus the Blind as well, so I get to roll one D6 and steal that much gold from you right back. Yeah, you can't it's gonna fizzle. Oh that's right. That's, that's right. gonna it's gonna fizzle. Fizzled because, because I can't you use can't it. target me. Um, and then uh, choose target player, move their ship three spaces in the direction you're choosing. I have to target myself. So I will uh, blow my ship to... Well, you, uh, can, you can complete Siller and Tribdus. That's you. right, <laughs> yeah, I will. Even though it's a bad thing to complete. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down that you completed that. And then I'm going to um, play this global effect. This is our first global effect. Global effects stay in the global effect That's right. Space. They can only be one at a time. And they replace each other similar to yeah. the... So you can read that one out. So this is called The Blind Prophet Will Show Me The Way. At the beginning of each turn, before the card draw phase, player one may switch the position of any two, sh two ships. And this will be able to move your ship as well, even though you can't be targeted because this is a global effect, correct? That's right, yeah. Okay. It doesn't actually target me. Okay, yeah. sounds good. So, uh, now we've completed our card play phase. And now we go to movement. Uniquely, we've both also completed a quest, completed a quest during <laughs> that phase. However, we, we, we will not, even if we reach another quest, we won't get our rewards till the very end. That's right. Both quests. You just have to remember which ones you completed so you can collect the reward. Okay, that's nice. clean up phase. Yep. All right, so I'll roll two dice here. Oops, sorry. So I've rolled a nine. Okay, and I've rolled a nine as well. Okay, so I'll play one, so I'll move first this time. I can't quite make it to Cersei, which is unfortunate because that was a decent one to get to. It's actually 10. To go from Lotus Cities to Cersei is actually 10 spots. So the best I can do is probably um, go to Sirens or Cyclops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can't get to Sirens. So it has to be Cyclops. So that's going to be 6. I'm going to move my supplies down 6. I'm going to write down Cyclops as having been completed. Normally, as I said, I would normally take the little token. And uh, your move. And of course, I got lucky enough to roll higher than an 8, which is what it took you to get to Lotus Eaters here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, 8, 9. Exactly, you needed 9. Okay, that's right. Yep. So uh, I have made it to Lotus Eaters and completed that as well, just barely. So we've both completed three quests at this point. Yeah, this is very yeah. neck and neck, this game. So it's a close game. Uh, normally I would have gained the lead because I gained an extra quest this turn, but Jimmy was able to do the same thing. With a lucky gust of wind. Yep. <laughs> so now we now we are in the reward phase, or the cleanup phase, and we will um, collect our rewards. So does it matter which order we collect our rewards should, right? You normally go around the table, and just to make sure everyone's doing it right, we normally go and do it one at a time. Um, so Let's do it the proper way because we might end up. It might ask us to lose something that we don't have and yeah, then gain right. something, right? That's right. So Lotus Eaters was the first one I completed. So um, I gain one d six crew. So I'm going to gain six crew. Nice roll. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm back up to thirty five. My starting uh, position. Um, gain three supplies. So I'm going to gain one, two, three, and thirty five supplies. And um, lose four gold. So I'm one. actually going to be down to one gold. That's fine. And uh, then my second thing was Cyclops. So I lose three crew. One, two, three. I lose two supplies. And I lose three gold. So I've got to lose zero gold. Hey, but that's, <laughs> not, that's not so bad considering some of the other ones on this yeah. one. Okay. okay so now it's, now it's yours. So first I landed at. Uh, Scylla. Uh, Scylla and Tribdus. Scylla and Tribdus. So uh, that was lose 10 crew. Quite a, quite so a, that'll put you down to 38. 39. 38. No, for 38, right? 
And then uh, lose 1d6 supplies. So we'll roll that and see. Four supplies. This is me. One, two, three, four. Um, I just realized that I did not move my supply token when I used my boat. So I oh, should yeah. do that as well. That yep. was nine supply. Nine, right, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. And my apologies. That's right. <laughs> and then... You're uh, going to lose all your gold. From I will lose six gold. That's Silla says thing. lose six And gold. I'm going to lose... Did I already do the six supply? Yeah, the D6 supply. So... Okay. Okay, but then I gain uh, one from D6, Lotus Eaters. One D6 crew. One D6 crew. A one. That's <laughs> a one. Fine. Not rolling well there. <laughs> Uh, three supplies. I'll take any supplies. I'm about to get scurvy here, and no gold to lose. So okay. happy, happy to be where All I'm. Right, at. So I'm going to pass you the player one token. Thank you, sir. You draw first. Well, before I draw at the beginning of each turn. Oh, we've got, we've got to get rid of a oh, right. card. Okay. So we've got another one up. So usually at the start of every turn, people might have a bit of a look at this card. So the Greek caravan is at Cyclops. That's right. And the Sumerian caravan is now at the underworld. Okay, uh, traveling caravans have moved again. Um, I'm going to look at this global effect and see if I'd like to switch our boats. Now, if I do, does it count as achieving the port you end up in? Yeah, if you haven't completed... So <laughs> I've actually never seen this card used in that manner, so this is the first time I've yeah. seen that, but yeah, you can actually use that to Perfect. complete Cyclops. And I'm going to get a slight gain here because you've already completed Lotus Eaters, so yeah, it's so redundant. It, does, it doesn't you. give me anything. So I will use that, uh, one of the few times I'll be able to target your ship here yeah. with a global effect. So, so what Jimmy's done is use the global to switch the position of the ships. Yep. Uh, and you can write that in the book now that I've, yeah, I've you've completed, completed uh, Cyclops. Cyclops. This is making up for my luck the last time I played this game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, and now we do our draw phase. So I'll draw two. And I'll draw two. I'm going to play one card. I'm going to play one card. Too. Okay. No curses, no blessings? I do. Okay. I, I, have a, I have a curse. Okay. Okay. So I obviously go first with this. So choose target player. I choose Jimmy. They lose their next movement phase. So this turn you won't get a movement phase. Ah. So yeah. if he had gold, he could try to pay the gods to counter that, but he doesn't. So. And how much would that cost? 4d6 worth of gold. Ooh, that's a lot of gold. So, um, in the, it's strange because we don't have much gold. Usually, by this stage, you would have a little bit of gold. But yeah, we don't have much. It. That's okay. Um, well, it should cost a lot to counter the effects of the gods, I suppose. That's My right. turn. Yep. So I will not move this turn, but I, I will play. Uh, I will extend an olive branch, and this is a global effect which will replace the old one. I don't want him moving my boat, so I've tried to destroy that one with this new one, which seems a uh, fairly mild. This is a global effect that allows only player one to complete Scylla and Charybdis, and of course this is redundant, we both have already completed Scylla and Charybdis, yep. and so that's mostly just to counter at, uh, the old effect, which I thought was a bit powerful. Yep. Now on to movement phase, which I will skip, and you will roll. Nine, so... One short. I'm not going to make it, so I'm just going to move... Um, as far as I can, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's headed gonna, towards Cersei in the underworld. I'm going to lose nine supplies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and that's that's all that's going to happen this turn. So the big card will not get. Oh, it will get removed because you've completed the quest. I have. So I will, you get three. That's crew. right. So I will. We're going to do the cleanup phase now. So I'm going to lose three crew. One, two, three. And two supplies. You lose. Two supplies. One, two. And gain 2d6 gold. Well, let's roll well finally. Oh! No, it's because you, you rolled my dice. I rolled your <laughs> dice, yeah. He's, got, he's been hoarding the lucky dice. 12 gold, now I'm a rich man. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now on the deluxe version, when you do the coins, will they be different sizes? Yeah, the, coin, yeah the coins will have different sizes. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, so now okay, I've taken a 5, a 5, and two ones. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yep. Alrighty, um, and then we remove a big card because 
It has been used, so we then have to remove it. I'll take the player one back. Pass the player one to We'll put a new large card up. So we now only have four left, which is um, enough for both of us to complete our six quests. All right. So. Uh, wow, look how good Cersei is this round. I'm both drawing caravans. Both caravans and Cersei. So I draw two. Okay. How many cards do you get? Um, I'm going to play. I suppose I'm just going to play one card this turn. Um, yeah, uh, I'll play one as well. Okay. You're player one. Any curses or blessings? No. Okay. Do you have any? No. No. So we just turn our normal cards over. Mine is a global effect, which will replace this one. So the new global effect is a captain's prayer, which is each. Each draw phase, player one may draw an additional card. It's quite, it's quite a good one. Okay. Yeah, seems and good. Play yours. And uh, mine is a ship effect. Finally, I have a ship effect. Uh, maybe not quite as powerful as yours, but seems good seeing as I have very few rations. This is hard rations. Uh, attached to target ship, so I'm attaching it to my own. I'll tuck it under the board here to rele you know, for relevancy here. Uh, I only spend half the amount of supplies when I move rounded down. Excellent, because as you can see, I'm running low on limes. Um, that's going to be our play phase. Now we go to movement. movement. I've rolled eight. I've rolled ten. Okay, so you're player one. Uh, I'll play one. You're player one. I'll go and move first. Um, so basically, I've only got I've got three to go. So I'm going to take whichever is the best out of these um, leftover ones. Um, hmm. Underworld looks okay. It's got lose three crew, gain 12 supplies, gain 2d6 gold. Or Cersei has gain 1d6 crew, you bet you lose a lot of supplies, you lose 21 supplies, gain 7 gold. and. This turn, Cersei has both of the Greek and Sumerian caravans at where she is. The Greek one gives you seven gold per card, and the Sumerian one gives you four crew per card. So I'm just going to have a quick look to see if I want to actually lose any of these um, cards. Um, and I don't really want to, these ones are all quite useful, so I don't really want to spend them. So I might actually just go to the Underworld instead. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, if I, if I do that, I'm going to leave Cersei open for Jimmy to go to. And how many cards have you got? I've got three cards. So he, he could potentially benefit out of that, but I'm going to take the risk that he probably wants to keep some of those as well. And I'm just going to spend six to get to the Underworld. And, um, and then it's my movement? Yep. Okay. So I only have two left to visit. I have to visit the Underworld and Cersei. Obviously, Underworld is taken. I'm also one short of reaching it with my 10 roll. I believe it's 11 to reach there, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go to Cersei. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? I use half of my uh, supply rounded down, so that's going to be 3. Um, one, two, three. Yep. And then that's that. Now we're here to clean up. Okay. You can write down. Uh, oh, yeah, Cersei. 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 Got one left. All right. So let's get mine first because I'm player one. So Underworld. I have. I'm going to lose three crew. Put me on twenty nine. Um, and I'm going to gain twelve supplies, which will be handy. So twenty eight. Twelve. Thirty. So I'm back up to thirty. And I'm going to gain 2d6 gold. Uh, what's that? Right? Seven. Seven. So I'm going to gain seven gold. And your turn. So you're turn. on Cersei. Okay. So you've got gain 1d6 crew. Gain 1d6 crew. Let's get some 
High rolls. Oh, Another wow. one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I gain, I lose 21 supply. That's about as bad as it gets. Now, if I drop all my supply here, then you just put it on zero. I just put it. Is it off board, basically? Yeah, off board. Okay. So zero, and then uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. And then um, also you get uh, where are you? So oh, I gain seven. Gain gold. seven gold. So take another seven gold. Now you're still there. You can trade with the caravans if you want. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to go to Helios. Um, when you run out of supply, you just You'll you, end up at Helios. You'll end up at Helios and you'll gain eight supplies back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But right now, while you're still there. If okay. You, uh, that's just just trying to decide if it would cost. Yeah, it right. has nothing to do with gold, though. I get to keep my gold? You get to keep your gold. Okay. Yeah. And I get to keep my crew. Yeah. You can actually spend gold when you're at Helios to buy more supplies as well. Oh, really? Yeah. That's five, what I was wondering. Five gold per supply. Oh, wow. That's pricey. I don't that know if I want to do that. <laughs> um, Okay, yeah, and I'm getting seven gold per card I sell, with four crew per card. Um, and yeah, so you've got both caravans there, you've got the Greek caravan, which is going to give you seven gold per card, yeah. and the Sumeria caravan is going to give you four crew per card, which is, you know, very powerful. But I get, so I'll get both, for each card I sell, I actually get for both? No, you have to Just trade, one or the other. You have to individually trade. Choose which caravan. Okay, yeah. I, want, I want to trade with the Greek caravan, the one that's giving me seven gold, because I'm going to end up trading that for... Supply and in the next turns, so I'm gonna I'm gonna trade two cards for fourteen gold, for fourteen, fourteen for seven and seven, seven twice, so that I can buy supply during my next right, yeah. stop over at yep. Helios because yep. that's a that's a bummer. Yep. So here's one, two, and five. That's seven, five, six, seven. So how okay. much how much gold total? Have you Very got? wealthy right now. I'm currently at uh, twenty eight gold. No, no, more than that. Um, 25, 33, 30, 32, 33 gold. Yeah. 33 gold, right, and I've got seven. <laughs> um, right, so now you move your ship, so you're yes. the only one, you move to Helios because okay. you ran out of supplies, and you, you automatically get eight to okay, start. Okay, so I'll automatically get eight. Now, when do I purchase these now? Ne you have to do it now. Okay, so here's my logic. I... It costs, I travel at half rations, so that's good. You can work out, so which one do you need to complete? Well, I, mean, I only need the underworld, so I can work out how much I need. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four, about seven, I only need about seven rations. So um, just to be safe, I'm gonna spend 10 gold Yep. And get two Buy more two. rations. Yep, yeah. Sure. I just want to be safe. I don't want to end up back at Helios. Yep. Okay. And that's it for me. So now we now it's the end of the of this phase and the end of the turn. So we get rid of the big card. There's three big cards left. Three quest cards left, sorry. And now um, I'm player one. Okay, and you're a player one. Okay. Um, so I draw two. You global you, effect first. The global Each draw effect. phase, I draw an additional card. So, so you draw three. three. Boom. And I'll draw two. Hmm. Okay, I'm only playing one. Well, I only need, I still need to complete. Yeah, what do you need to complete? I need Scylla and Tryptus. And Cersei, and you need only Underworld. Underworld, only. Right? Alright. Um, I'm going to play one card. And you're playing one, one card. Two. Yep, no cursor. I have, I have Blessing. Okay, go for so it. So my Blessing is the Blessing of Aphrodite. Take your ship directly to a port of your choice. Uh, okay, yeah. so where do you go? Um, so Scylla. I'm going to. Scylla and Tritus. Well, let's have a look. Oh, uh, well, um, yeah. I need to complete Cersei and Scylla, so it just doesn't really matter which order I do it in, because I hope they can do it both this turn. I'll need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to get to Scylla from Cersei. So I'm just going to place myself at yes. Cersei. Well, since you since if you do go this way, you'll end up closer to the end of the game. Yeah, right? if I'm trying to, to get to Ithaca at the end. That's right. Yeah. That's my that's my uh, yeah. That's good strategy anyway. Okay, uh, so, so I'm, I'm going to write good. down that I've completed Cersei. 
And now you play your card. Okay. Oh, sorry. My card is destroy a ship effect card in play. Okay. I would like to destroy that hex proof you've been playing yeah. all game. That's been foiling every <laughs> plan. I hope. It's a very powerful card to get on. Let's turn just, one. Let's call it runes of yeah, protection. Yeah, runes of protection. We'll call it. <laughs> sorry, I just. Uh, it, it makes it very difficult for me to uh, interact with you. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay. okay. And then uh, we move to movement. Movement. So, yeah. yeah. You got an eight. I got a nine. So I won't have enough to get to Scylla, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm a bit shy as well, but um, I'll move first. Uh, one. How many you got? Nine. Two, yeah, three, two, four, five, six, three, three eight, four, eight, four I get five, nine. six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Yep. yep. And I've got. Uh, That'll cost eight. me four. One, one, two, three, four. It costs me half. I'm going to be right there. Okay. And that's going to cost me eight. Yep. Okay. All right. So neither of us have completed anything this turn. So the big card stays. So we're both safe in that regards. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, become player one. All right. So I'm going to utilize this global effect and draw an extra card. So I'm going to get three cards this turn. So my hand's mm -hmm. now quite large. Mm -hmm. I've got seven cards in hand now, which is quite good. Do I get to choose in which order my blessings and curses are played? No, your blessings will always be played first. And then, and then other people's blessings, and then your curses, see. and then other people's. I get you. Yeah. And since you're player one, your blessings go first as well. Yep. Okay. How many cards have you got? Five cards in hand. This is, this is an interesting late game play. We've got a full hand of cards. Yeah, I've got seven, Jimmy's got five. So. Yeah, we could do a lot of interesting <laughs> things. I definitely want to play this mm -hmm. card. Just building my play here. Mm. I hate this card. I don't want that right now. Okay, why not? And okay. Seems good to me. Okie dokie. I'm just playing two. Okay. Are there any blessings or curses? Yes, I have a blessing. And I have a curse. So this is, this is the first time this has happened for the game. So this is one of the interesting parts of blessings and curses. You've played a blessing, mm -hmm. which is a purple yellow blessing. Um, you will get to automatically counter a purple or yellow curse of your choice. So, unfortunately for me, you get to counter this. And that's just automatic that's because automatic. the blessing beats the curse. Yeah, blessings kind of trump, they kind of They're trump like an cards. automatic counter yeah. spell. Okay. So, just for the fact, for the sake of people watching the video, there's a lot less blessings in here than curses. So, um, if you play a curse, a blessing and someone happens to play a curse that turn of the same color, count it, you can counter it. Um, Jimmy's got a multicolor blessing. So he would be able to pick either way. If I if I played two curses, he could have taken his pick. So in this case, it's going to be this one, yes. which which would have enabled me to rip your hand apart. Yeah, it was it was going to be quite nasty. Um, because I've played this, it doesn't go into the discard pile because it hasn't actually come out of my hand. It's actually been played, so it actually will get removed from the game. Okay. Well. I wonder, and I, I lucked out because this blessing I drew also has another effect, which is quite strong here. It says target player may play only blessings and curses this turn, so it's going to actually end up countering your regular card as well. Yeah. So and this will from Yep. Yeah. So that's gone as well, which was which was going to um, Steal gold. make you lose some supplies. Uh, okay. <laughs> which that's you don't. not what I want. <laughs> Uh, and so I only have one card left. There's one card left to play. Choose, it's very mild. Choose target player, Gust of Aeolus. So 
Uh, choose target player, move their ship three spaces in the direction of your choosing. I just want to avoid the old snake eyes here, so, you know, so I'm going to do my best and, and go one, two, three. And this way it almost guarantees, or basically guarantees, that I'm going to make uh, it. You can get in there no matter what now. Even with snake eyes. Alright, so we roll. I rolled a roll nine. nine. And I rolled a six. So I'm player one. Um, with nine, I can easily get into Scylla, which is my last quest, but I don't want to go there because I'm actually going to lose 20 crew if I go there. So I'm just going to move one spot and just sit outside and pay one. Sharp play, sir. Sharp play. Because we still have two cards up, so I've still got time to complete it without losing 20 crew. Perfect. Yeah. Assu and assuming that you're going to go yes, there. Yes, and I will go here, and I'll lose one supply because it costs half. Yep. And uh, two spaces, and then I'll. You're going to get uh, nine crew. I'll take that. That's a really good one. Yeah, that's very good. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, you're on 46 crew. You're going to lose 5d6 supplies. So, uh, that's, that's going, to be... going to send you back to. Yeah, that's going it's to probably send... going to help you in the end because it's going to put you closer to. I the... planned it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I did not so, plan it. But so uh, 5d6. So, unless I roll. No, I, no matter what, it's an, if I ignore all, all ones, it's enough, yeah. Okay. So I go to zero supply, zero supplies. and what's the last effect? Um, 12 gold. Lose 12 gold. Easy payment for a rich guy like me. Yeah. And the Sumerian Caravan is there. You can get 12 gold per card. Whoa! That's a rich caravan. <laughs> I got lucky, because I can spend that for more... I still need supply to get home. Yeah. That's very important. Um... Okay, well, I don't want the deck. I can sell that card. And I can sell this card. Two cards I'll sell. Yep, so you get 5, 10, 15, 20, 24 gold. There you go. Wowzers, guys. Yeah, that's a lot of gold. I'm getting lucky. You should have seen me the last time I played this game. I, I, I was in. <laughs> I, was, I think it was a five player, how many players? We had a lot of players, four yeah, players, five players, four or five player game. and I just was definitely in dead last. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to remove the big card. Oh, and I go straight to the to Helios, Helios first, and, and I game. also I want to buy I get eight, eight supply. supply, and then I'm going to buy supply as well, because I'm, I'm worried that you might get rid of this ship effect. Uh, one, it's going to cost me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at least to get to Ithaca. So just to be safe. But nine at the most, actually. Uh, nine at the most, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and I have eight. Oh, sorry, you're on here. Sorry, I'm there, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. so just to be safe, I'm going to buy uh, ten. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Okay, so in case you destroy this, just in case, I'm going to buy two more rations. Yeah. There is a chance that you may to lose. Is there any use for this gold at once I get home? Yeah, if, if we both go to Ithaca and we've both got the same crew tally, whoever's got the most gold will be the winner. If we had the same crew. Yeah, which we don't. You're, you're much further ahead mm -hmm. with crew than I am. I'm trying to decide if I want to. I think I actually want to go for broke then and try to just get as much. In case you play a card that takes away some of my supply, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm a, I don't mind the gold going away. I don't expect you to catch up in crew just yet. So I'm going You're not going to leave any any gold to counter any spells? Or? I can't counter. Oh, you can counter spells. That's right. Oh, and it's a risk because it's dice roll. Uh, How much is it? 4d6? Uh, 4d6, yep. Mm, so the average there would be about 14, something yeah. in that range. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good Good point. Let's let's save. So you, you bought two already? You already paid for the two? I paid for two. Yep. I'm going to pay for three. So one more. One more. Right. I'll go to 11. All right. Thanks for reminding me. That's okay. Sportsman life. All right. <laughs> so I become player one. Yep. Okay. And three we draw cards. cards. I get three cards. How one the global effect? Two, yeah. three. Two for me. And now I'm still looking at paying a lot of crew uh, because Scylla and Tryptus is lose five d six crew. So I can still lose a lot of crew. Definitely want to play this card, and I'll also play this card. 
All right. Two cards for me this turn. All right. I'll find two as well. All right. Uh, any curses or blessings? No. Neither. So we flip all over, and as player one, I'll go first. I drew a wonderful card for this turn. I drew Blighted Port. Area effect. Any player within three spaces of target port cannot land there this turn. And it just so happens that the one port you have to land, you're quite close to. Right. So I will tar target Scylla and Triodis. You also lose two crew, two gold, and two supplies. Two okay. Two, one, around. two. One, two. One, two. Finally, uh, Boros and Benia, I think it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Uh, roll 1d6. Choose target player. They lose that many supplies. I gain that many. So I'm going to roll 1d6. I roll a 6. There's still 6 supplies off me. Brutal. I'm getting very lucky at the end of this game here. I'm feeling yeah. good. I'm feeling right. good. So I mean, I'm making good decisions as well. <laughs> Alright, so I've got a chip effect, okay. which is, um, well, in my opinion, it's the best of the ship effects. Oh, okay. it's, it's called Odysseus. And it says, attach the target ship. The king of Ithaca is on board. You may draw plus one card during each draw phase. Um, you may roll plus one d6 in every movement phase, and you mm. gain one d6 gold at the end of every turn. Oh my goodness! Imagine getting that at the beginning of the game. Yeah, that's good. Set you up. <laughs> Doesn't last long. People usually. Yeah, they get rid of it quite quite quickly. <laughs> and my other card is Sotophilus Grenarius, which is basically um, another name for weevils. <laughs> No, yeah, right. <laughs> They're going to eat your your um, supplies away. Okay, well, so you're going, to, you're going to lose ten supplies unless you ten want, supplies unless okay. you want to try to counter it. Which I like could, that. but I also have this sacrificial lamb. May I use that? Yes. You may play this card at any time when you become the target of another card. The card targeting you is countered. I sacrifice a lamb. Okay. <laughs> I try to stop <laughs> <Sitophilus> Grenarius. <laughs> okay, well, I've sacrificed the lamb. It seems very scientific. Yeah. Uh, I have countered <laughs> the weevils, and now um, I... Um, we're up to the movement. Movement, that's correct. Alright, I need my black dice. So now you're really just banking on me rolling poorly, because I've, I've got, I've, I'm getting close to the end. I've rolled five, but I'm not going to be moving anywhere. Right. So. Yeah. Okay, seven. Okay, well, so we're not going to end any... Six. Is that six? Yes, six. I'm not trying to cheat here. Okay, so I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And I will play three in one, two, three in supply. Yep. Good to go. And that'll be the end of that turn. That's the end of the turn. And so at the end of turn, I use my ship effect to gain one d6 gold. It seems good, Odysseus. Four. All right. Gives me nine gold total. Here on is player one. the token. So now I get to draw an extra card for Odysseus. You're drawing four this Extra turn. card for the global. And two for the turn. It's this guy. <laughs> <right here>. He's <laughs> coming. Dark Horse coming in. Ha! I have nine cards. It's time to think I should have saved my counter spell. <laughs> my sacrificial lamb. Mm. Alright. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll play this. And. Hmm. That's it. One card for me. Mr. Nine Card Hand. <laughs> I'm just having a look. I'm playing this one. Is there a maximum hand size in this game? Ah, uh, no. Perfect. <laughs> Don't always have nine. <laughs> um. Now, at the end of the game, your crew, the amount of crew you have is very important in determining your, 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 your who wins, right? That's, that's the yeah, main factor. Uh, whoever has the most crew wins. Okay. Um, at the end, uh, is there any way, once you're both at Ithaca, is there any tallying of additional crew selling gold, buying crew for gold, oh, there's no trading and extra resources? Whoever gets there first gets a bonus. Mm -hmm. So, whoever gets there... If you get there first, and it's Act 1, which it still is now, you'll get 5 crew. Um, if you get there first, but it's Act 2, you'll get 4 crew. So that's a bonus you get. Um, now, once you're in Ithaca, you don't have to move anymore. Moving is then um, uh, a voluntary thing, but you still get to play cards, so you can still try to make other people lose crew, etc. I'll explain more when we get to... Okay, cool. That's the Act 2 phase. That's yep. the end. Okay. It, 
just going to play this one. Okay. All right. Uh, any blessings or curses? No, sir. No, me neither. All right. Okay, so I've got a card called Thanatos Taketh. Choose target player, they lose eight crew, they target you. Well, that's just good. Can I try to counter it? You can, yeah. You roll 4d6, and, and then if you can afford to pay it, you have to pay it. Okay. How much crew are they trying to take? Eight? Eight, yep. So close. Do I want to counter that? Yeah, I think I do. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can. You can afford it, yep. So you need to pay you. And then my card is a ship effect that's good, but not as good as yours, and I'm, I'm wondering, can I play it and attach it to yours? Yes, you can. So I, I'm trying to give him, instead of Odysseus, I'm giving you a merchant passenger. Yep. Not quite as good as the king, but uh, he's going to give you five gold every turn, but yep. it, at least it will cancel out his old the ship card, effect, the card which, draw. Was, <laughs> which was a card draw, which was a brutal for me. Okay. Um, okay. So that's an interesting turn. Uh, movement. Movement phase. Perfect. So, um, yep. Your first. Eight. I just don't want snake eyes here, really. Even, I need a four. Yeah, I got ten. ten. So, alright, so I'm just going to move one and pay one. Okay, and I will move four. And I'll pay two. two. Yep. I'm right there with you. Oh, that's interesting that we're both on the same supplies. Yeah, you, you've done much better with the crew. All right, so now we go to the... I, I, I've now completed all the quests. Yep. Uh, which means that the game will go into Act 2 in a minute. Uh, just writing down that I've completed the last quest. Okay, and um, so I lose 5d6 crew, which is not good. You lost 5d6 crew? Yeah, well, it was 20, 10, 16, 17, 18, 20, 23 crew. Oh, he's down to his last four guys. <laughs> no, four people on my yeah, ship. Did, you, did, they, did you just eat everyone? The, yeah, the ciliary troopers just basically ate them. <laughs> oh my gosh. I get 10 supplies though, which puts me on 24, which is good. And I gain 6 gold. Okay, now all the large quest cards now are removed. Because we've gotten them all. Yeah. And so the game is now into Act Two. So in Act Two, um, the basically the cleanup phase is now very minor because um, there's no more big cards to get rewards from. So the cleanup phase is now only um, becomes relevant if, if something has to happen at the end of the turn. Okay. Okay. I have one question for you. Yep. Since I arrived at Ithaca before the end of this oh, turn, you, am get, I a, you get a bonus. Yeah, you did, you did arrive there during Act 1, so you get a bonus 5 crew. crew. 1, 2, 3, 4, which puts you on 51. So how it's looking at the moment is, I've got a long way to come back if I'm supposed to win this game. Um, now, my how Act 2 works is you cannot, there's no way you can, you can um, replenish your supplies during uh, um, Act 2 because there's no more quests to complete. Okay. So... Every time you roll, unless you're in Ithaca, every time you roll, you have to, you have to move the maximum amount that you roll. Whereas in Act One, you only had to move what you wanted to move. Otherwise, players could just um, try to abuse you, get drawing as many cards as yeah, they can, right. playing yeah. effects. It basically forces you to use all your supplies. Once you use all your supplies in Act Two, instead of going to Helios, you then start burning through crew. So your crew start dying. If you run out of supplies, because they've got nothing to eat, so they start dying one at a time for every movement. Until? Until you've got no crew left. and then. You but can, you can just stay in Ithaca. If you you don't. can, but there's obviously there's cards that people can play to force you out. And I only get to participate in the cards if I'm leaving Ithaca. No, you still get to do the, 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 the whole game. You still get to play. Mm, okay. You, so, don't, you don't have to move. You're not obliged to move if you're in Ithaca. So what's the benefit to me moving around now is my curiosity, because um, if I'm... There's no benefit for you to leave there. Oh, I would just want to stay there. And yeah, like you, you just got to try to make me deplete my supplies so that I have to come back to Ithaca. Oh, but you could move me. If I, if I move into Ithaca... You could move me with a gust of wind, and then I'm forced to come back yeah. to Ithaca or I'm going to burn supplies. Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay, so that's why it's relevant for yep. the player who already arrived. Yeah, that's right. And basically... Um, in a two-player game, it's a bit of an arm wrestle now. You've, you've got to try to play cards to make me use my supplies because 
I, I know that if I move back to Ithaca, you win the game because right. you've got 51 crew and I've got four crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. I know you're going to win. Okay. Okay. <laughs> At this point, I've gotten I've gotten quite lucky near the end there. Um, yeah. But uh, but okay, so let's see here. So we're in the card play first, no? Oh, sorry, card draw. So you're, you're oh, it's my turn again. Player one, so you and I am getting the extra card. One, two, two three. three, and I'll draw two. Okay. Two. What happens if uh, you run out of crew? If you run out of crew now, yeah, you're 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 lost at sea. If you if you run out of crew, oh, I'm lost at sea. Eliminated. Eliminated. Yeah. Okay. See what the other one is. I can see. Yeah, the, yeah, what does the other one do? The other one says no ship, but yours can sail into target port this turn. Hmm. So you can try it. Kick me out of. Yeah. Well, what if I'm in that port already? Like if I counter this one successfully, it doesn't. That mm. almost counters the other one. Too. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I guess I'll try. I can't roll. I mean, I have to roll really low. But is there no downside to trying, right? If no I downside to trying. Okay. So you've got how much gold? I've eight. got eight gold, but I mean, I've got your dice in my hand. So <laughs> I, 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 you've got to roll on the right. Yep. Oh. Nine. Oh nine. <laughs> so, so I get right. to, yep, I get to control, control my movement. Yep. Okay. My second one is no ship. I'm going to target Ithaca as the port. Yeah, that's no, fine. No ship but mine can go into Ithaca this time. That's fine, yeah. Yep. Okay. Now the normal cards we turn over. Yes, sir. And you're first because you're playing one? Yes. Um, I'm going to try to play a pointed leader. Take the player one token and don't move it next turn. So I just become player one again. You get to keep it. Yep. And then I will play Ares and Athena. Roll 1d6, then choose target player, they lose that many crew, and you gain that many. <laughs> oh, we'll try to... Yeah, you gotta count that. I'll try to count that. That's gonna potentially eliminate you. Yeah, it's gonna be a pricey pay, but you, you got the money for it. It's gonna cost me 13, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's okay, it's worth it. it. That could have eliminated you. Yeah. Yeah. I've got three more spells to play. Okay, let's hear right. it. So Tiger Player rolls 46 for a movement this turn. I'll target you. Oh, this guy over here. I'll try to counter it. No. It's 11. So you got how much? No, eight. I eight. got it rolled really low. Okay. I've got, also got a ship effect, which I'm going to put on my ship. Um, oh, sorry, no. Yes, I was. I can't lose or gain crew as a result of targeted Effects, curses, or blessings. Mm. So anything that targets me directly, I can't lose or gain crew from that. Okay. Um, and the last one I've got is a global effect. So it's going to replace this one. Uh -oh. Ships cannot sail in any northerly direction. Mm. Right. The bag of wind. All right. Aeolus' is bag of wind. All right, so now we roll. Aeolus makes really good one. Yeah. Dip for chips. So I've got a nine. You have to roll forty-six, and I get to move you this turn. Uh, oh, that's your movement. Okay, that's so. Yeah. So you're gonna get there, huh? Okay. Low rolls. <laughs> yes. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm gonna move you down to here. Yeah. Make you spend. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Five of that. Yeah. And. Um, and you're gonna move to Ithaca. 
Well, I've got how much? Um, five, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to move six. Sit next to there. Because if you get there, then the game's over. Then you then it checks. The game checks to see. Yeah, it checks to see if it's over. But so you can't arrive until. I don't want to risk the fact that you might be able to get rid of this, and then come back in there. At the moment, you can't come back into the ah because you can't sail north. <laughs> that's that's dangerous. Okay. All right. So now interesting I'm... play. This guy's tricky. You think you might have. You think you might have even designed the game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the end of the turn. Um, so okay. the token stays with you. It stays with me. Alright, so uh, draw just draw two, two now. That's One, right. yep. yep, two. And two for me. What does that card do? The ship effect you have? My one says. Oh, you can't lose. Card I can't card. lose or gain crew as a result of any cards that get played. Mm -hmm. And if I get shipwrecked, or if I run out of uh, this, I still get sent back to Helios. No, no, it's Act Two, so you don't go. Oh, back it's you start burning. You crew. Start burning crew. Yep. And Act Two, you have to use your full roll. That's right. For every. But you time can't move north. Okay, I've got two. <laughs> I've got two cards I'm gonna play. Okay. I've got two as well. All right. Curses or blessings? None. Me neither. But I'm yeah. player one, so let's let's do my stuff first. <laughs> First, uh, global effect. Let's break this one. I did get lucky and draw one. Wow. Uh, for player one, any gains of supply, gold, or crew are doubled. Then, I also got this blighted port. Anyone within this can't, t stand, can't get there, but those players lose two crew, two gold, and two supplies, and because it's not targeted, yeah, I think you still lose it, right? The two crew. Well, I don't have the runes of protection anymore, anyway. Don't you have one that says you can't lose crew? Oh yeah, but, but yeah. only if it's targeted, right? Um, yeah, target. They have to be targeted. Yeah, so that one I got lucky as well. Yeah. And two gold. And then no one, you can't land here this turn. Yep. Does that mean I can't either? No, you, you're because so there's the, only players within three spaces. It's a blighted port. It only affects the players within three spaces. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay, um, and then uh, that's all my cards. Okay, mine says um, destroy a ship effect card in play. So I'm going to destroy your ship effect yeah, card. I saw that coming. Um, and um, target player rolls 46 for removing this turn. I'll target you. Not that it, was, that it matters anymore because you don't. Once you move in there, you don't have to use your the rest of the uh, movement. Oh right. Yeah. I'm just going to get there regardless. Yeah. You wouldn't want to roll it for yourself, though. You'd really. I guess it doesn't really make sense. I'm not going to be moving. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I have to. But... <laughs> All right. All right, I'll make it. I rolled a bunch. You're ten away. Yeah. Yeah, but that will make me um, run out. Yeah. So. So I'm just going to automatically. So you're going to lose. To you're going to lose your seven, and then you're going to lose three of those. Oh, that's right. Then okay. you're going to be two, back three, four, four, five. Oh, wait, sorry. One, two, three, ten. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Okay. I can have go. All right. And I, I have to move my full move. Um, you? Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Because we're phase two. Yeah. Right? So which is seven. So I'm just going to move back and forward seven times. So I'm just going to burn seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I see. But I'm going to stay where I'm going to stay where I am. Yeah. This is sort of an arm wrestle. This is great. All right. But I've got a long way to go because I want two crew and you're on forty-eight. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm a little bit ahead. All right. Uh, player one, you become now you gain any double gains here. You draw first. 